Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this edition of Seeing Beyond and Through with Monty. Right before you is a legendary Queen of Soul herself, Miss Aretha Franklin. Now, Aretha, as we know, is a worldwide icon of music. She's a pillar within the black community, the Queen of Soul. And her achievements goes way beyond than what we can just mention here. But what I do want to mention here is that Aretha has been brought up in a very controversial way. See, within the past four days, a purported trans group, uh, they call themselves uh, TCMA, Transcultural Mindful Alliance. And they're, pay, they're based in Europe, I believe the Netherlands. And basically, it says about uh, this particular song. Now, Aretha Franklin's song, Natural Woman, is deemed offensive to trans women. Outrageous activist demand song is removed from Spotify and Apple Music. Many people were confused about this particular account, this particular group, with many of people stating that it's a hoax, it's a joke, it's satire, it's basically just not real. So I had to do some investigation, investigating basically of this particular account and this particular group. And what I find is going to be something interesting, and you're going to have to decide whether you deem this to be a true account with people who are running it to be having some type of an agenda or just really parody and satire. Because basically, what I found about it was very disturbing. I want you to take a look at this right here. It says, TCMA, Transcultural Mindful Alliance, founded January 20, 23rd, exclusively by trans individuals promoting cultural changes to ensure the inclusivity of trans individuals. DM us to support our mission. I want you to look right there carefully when it says founded January 2023 or January 2023. Just pay close attention to that because something's going to come up there that's going to be kind of puzzling. Remember it says that right there. And here it is. I've darkened it so you can make no mistake right there. If you're, you're hard at um, seeing, you can clearly see it right here. Found it January 2023. So the statement about Aretha Franklin's song, Natural Woman, was released on January the 20th. It was released January the 20th. Now, what happened was right here. I want to show you something. Here we are, 22 hours later from today, four days later, they changed it to look right there at what's circled. It says parody satire. See right there? Now before, as I clearly show you, it did not say that. It just says founded in January 2023. So they changed it to parody satire. I have a theory as to why I believe they changed it. And what's so strange is that many people are believing that, oh, it was not real. It was parody. It was satire. It was a joke. It's a troll account. I don't believe that at all. I believe that they changed this thing there to mitigate and offset all the criticism that they were getting. Now watch this. It says this, hold on. The Daily Mail, New York Post, and many other outlets are actually covering this parody account as though it is serious. Now, one reporter reached out to us even. Let's go on. Not one reporter. Let's go back there. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, here we go. Now we're back on track. And it goes right here to say this. Here we go. Not one reporter reached out to us to even ask what this is. And people, journalists, actually thought this could be real. So here's my theory, people. 
that they actually released that particular statement to that particular song and what they wrote on January the 20th read like this. Aretha Franklin's 1968 song, Natural Woman, perpetrates multiple harmful anti-trans stereotypes. There's no such thing as a natural woman. This song has helped inspire acts of harm against transgendered women. TCMA is requesting it's removed uh, from Spotify and Apple Music. So basically, I think what they are doing, and what they have done to cover their ass, to combat all the harmful criticism, the negative press, to basically negate all that is to go back and change and pretend like we are a satire parody account, that it was not real, that we were just joking around. That's what they're doing. And I put a picture of Boozy right here because do you remember about six years ago, the criticism that he got? Remember this? Rapper Boozy Badass claims he paid for sex for his 14-year-old son. And... I got my son's up early. I got that up early. Yeah, all my nephews, ask any one of my nephews, or any one of my, ask any one of my nephews or my son, who got them they first head? Big dog. Yeah, ask any of my nephews, who got them they first head? Big dog. Hey. I've been got my son up. My nine-year-old, ten-year-old, I showed all of them how to put on rubber. Before you even start having sex, I didn't show my sons how to put on rubber. Ain't finna get my son no more out here. I'm training them boys right. I'm training them boys right. Ask any of my, 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 my nephew. Ask any of them. Ask my son. Yeah. They were 12, 13. They got hit. Yeah. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Hell yeah, I got my son. You fing right. <coughs> Yes, a grown woman. Grown, super grown. Super grown. Check this out. Checked all my nephews out. Super grown. Is she grown? She checked me out. I know what she did to them. Okay, so you heard that out of Boozy's own mouth, what he stated. Now, what happened after he received backlash? He received criticism, condemnation. What happened with that? See what he did? Was Boozy Badass joking about uh, hiring a prostitute for his son? He claims basically that it was a joke, that he was only joking about it. And this was after he received the condemnation, the backlash, and a criticism. This is no different than what that trans account is doing. Now, granted, that trans account to me is what I did some research, it was basically two people who were there. It's a budding trans account. It's, it would be considered grassroots. It would be something that major trans organizations do not recognize. So, And they basically got founded, as they stated, uh, January of this year. So they're not really on a map or radar. But my whole belief is that with Aretha, Aretha Franklin, they probably did not expect it to pick up like it did. It blew up in their face. And it was much more than what they can handle. They bit off more than what they can chew. So now what they had to do was walk it back. The exact same way that Boozy did. He's walking it back, claiming it was a joke. He was just playing around. He was clowning around. And people shouldn't take it serious. This is the exact same thing that they're doing. So no, I do not believe that what they had to put there four days later, they're going to change it to a parody satire account. They only did that to save face and to stop the criticism from coming in. And this is just something that I was um, talking to someone online about, a DM, and we were having a chat about this. And I said, and by the way, here's the problem. Many are not uh, taking them seriously, um, if they are legit or not. I said it would benefit black people, especially to jump on this, to send a message that we're not going to tolerate any such uh, ridiculous actions connected to our culture. So regardless, 
if this trans account is legitimate or not, or parody of satire account, which we don't really know, uh, you jump on that in either way. You send a message that any such foolish actions connected to our culture, to our icons, is not going to be tolerated. So therefore, it does benefit black people to jump on that. We don't know if it's true or not. This is the same scenario if someone came into my house with a toy gun. Well, I have no idea if it's a toy gun, if it's a prank or not, if it's just a prop, or if you're just joking. However, I'm not going to treat it as that. I'm going to treat it that like it's the real thing, which a lot of black people did treat this like it was the real thing. So therefore, trying to walk it back right now, to me, is nothing more than saving face. Uh, they bit off more than what they can chew. They're ashamed of uh, their actions. And they had no idea that it would be this worldwide public outrage for a brand new trans organization, two people or not, that is just starting up. So since they could not handle the criticism, what did they do four days later? They walked it back by stating it is a parody. It is a parody account, just satire. We were just playing. We were just joking around. It's not anything to take seriously. But I'll call BS on that. And by the way, black people need to be very careful with this stuff about it being a parody account. Um, something that we shouldn't take serious. Because here's the thing now. By them claiming to be a parody account, couldn't they hide behind that? They can hide behind satire. So therefore, they can do a lot of off-collar, tasteless jokes. They can even go into racial jokes because they're a parody account. It's not something to be taken seriously. And this is what they're probably positioning themselves to do. It's for people to not take them seriously, to pretend and look at them as being parody satire. Not something that people should buy into. When you see things like that about Aretha Franklin, you jump on them like the, like it is real. Because I believe this is real. I believe it was real. I just believe that they changed it four days later because of the criticism and backlash in which they received. And righteously so. So I just think that people need to be alert, stay alert. It's a good thing they jumped on that. And in future things, if you're not really sure that it's a parody account, satire, or whatever... Treat it like it is the real theme. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is another edition of Seeing Beyond and Through with Monty. And I will see you all beyond and through.